day one of the challenge and the smoke detector is going off, so that's fun. Today is day one of letting you pick my meal and we've got a request for a barbecue and chicken cheese pizza with hot peppers of your choice. Simple and good for day one, if only it were that easy. I'm just going to say right off the bat that I've shot hundreds of videos over the past few years and this one was one of the most frustrating. I also decided to use the bomb hot sauce in my barbecue sauce base, but this isn't the one they use in the show. This one is the ground zero version, which is almost two and a half times spicier. When I saw this comment, I immediately thought of the smoked brisket that Senpai Kai gave me when he visited a couple months ago. The only problem is that it's a frozen block and I needed to cook it today for the challenge. Good news is that I can sous vide it. I texted Max to make sure it was safe and I got the okay. So it's only been a month since I've used the vacuum sealer and I've already forgotten how to use the slicer. I don't remember how to use this. After spending an embarrassingly long amount of time to figure it out, we were good to go. I set it for 155 degrees Fahrenheit and plopped the brisket inside. Next was making the pizza dough. Thanks to Janelle, I have a recipe. Flour, yeast, salt, water, and olive oil. Make sure you don't forget to attach the dough hook. Oops. So I think I definitely should have mixed the dry ingredients first because the salt was just a clump. Also a big shout out to Janelle. When she visited me last week, she noticed I didn't have any spatulas, so she got me some. So the salt wasn't mixing in that well, so I took matters into my own hands and mixed it up before using the stand mixer for about six-ish more minutes. I also added a little more water just because it seemed dry. I sprayed a bowl with nonstick spray, placed in the dough, and covered it up. Okay, so I got my dough resting. R resting? Or is it poofing? Uh, I don't know. And I've got this in the sous vide, so now now I'm gonna go to the store and get the rest of the ingredients. I went to a local meat market. Can I just get one chicken breast, please? So that takes care of the chicken part of the request. And I also grabbed a red onion since that will help provide some crunch and flavor. Then I went to the Italian market to figure out which cheese would be best. I was kind of overwhelmed with the cheese choices, so I asked the employee. Which cheese would be best for like topping our pizza? Yeah. Okay, I'll take um, three of those. For the peppers, I was thinking banana peppers, but they didn't have any, so I went for the hot whole cherry peppers. I'm back home and the dough doesn't look like it has risen much, but it also doesn't look too bad. I put on my apron and my cat was getting some exercise. Now it's just prepping all the toppings, starting with the peppers first. Then I cut the red onion. Now for the mozzarella. I was thinking of shredding it so I can sprinkle over the pizza, but that's not how things work. Okay, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that would work, but it didn't, so I'll just rip apart pieces later on. I just sliced them up so it would be easier to tear apart later. Also, I definitely didn't need three, so if you have any ideas for what I should do for the rest of the mozzarella, please let me know. Okay, now that I've gotten the easy toppings out of the way, it was time to cook the chicken. Just going to pound out the thicker end so it'll cook more evenly, removing the skin and just seasoning it with salt and pepper since it'll be covered in barbecue and hot sauce. And I'm not really sure why I'm cooking it in a stainless steel pan since I've never cooked chicken in this thing before. I guess I'm just trying to increase the difficulty level or something because why not? Not. Heated up the olive oil and dropped the chicken breast in along with the skin. I'm going to see if I can crisp it up and use it as a crunchy topping. While the chicken is cooking, I'm mixing up the barbecue sauce with the hot sauce. I'll be using Sweet Baby Ray's Honey Barbecue Sauce. And the hot sauce says, consume one drop at a time with extreme caution. I shook up the bottle and poured in a good amount. Mixed it up and then continued cooking the chicken. I spread out the dough in a greased up cast iron skillet. Not gonna lie, I was pretty proud of myself up to this point. Things were going well and this actually looks like pizza dough. The brisket has been in for four hours hours at this point and I took it out and it was looking juicy. Also, I don't have a brisket knife, so please don't come at me in the comments for how I slice this. A brisket, jeez Louise. I couldn't resist, I had to try a bite and oh boy was it good. Props to Kai and his dad for cooking this. I basically just shredded the brisket so I could just spread it on top of the pizza. Man, I couldn't stop snacking on the meat. And then it was time to cut the chicken. I don't know why I didn't use the tongs to help hold the meat. I think the good brisket was impairing my ability to think. Hot. Alrighty, things were going great. Got my dough and all my toppings and the oven is preheated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I spread out the sauce, which is smelling very spicy, added the brisket and chicken, and just a couple of slices of the chicken went a long way. I don't know why I thought I would need to use the whole thing. And then I got the crispy chicken skin, which I just sprinkled over the top, got out my mozzarella, and used about three fourths of the one in the balls. Next were the cherry peppers. All right, I might have gone overkill with the ingredients, but it's really too late to back out now. Yeah. I went overkill. With all the toppings on, I drizzled a bit more barbecue sauce for good luck. I was very happy with how it looked and couldn't wait for how it turned out. Alrighty, good luck, bye. 
I don't really know why I said bye to it. Maybe because I just built an emotional attachment to it or something. So after a minute in, the smoke detector went off and this is the very first time it's gone off here, which says a lot since I cook steak quite often. I don't know if it was from the hot sauce or the high heat of the cast iron skillet being in there, but it didn't seem that smoky. I grabbed my mouse pad and started fanning the detector, which got to turn off. I also opened up the windows. I opened the oven with the eyes right at the opening and the fumes got me. After 10 minutes, it didn't look done, so I added four minutes. Maybe not. I put it in for four more minutes. I don't know what the theme with four is. Okay, but doesn't that almost look like a pizza commercial though? Advertising Lisa Spicy Pizza. All right, I think I'm losing it. Jeez Louise. All right, take two. This time I did three minutes. Okay, now it's done. The crest looks nice and brown. Isn't it beautiful? Oh no. What the? I really just wanted some pizza, y'all. Oh well, good things come with patience. I put it in for another eight minutes. If it's raw, it's raw. I just took it out because I didn't want the toppings to be more overcooked than they already were. It doesn't look too bad. Pizza crust fail. I grabbed one slice and put the rest back in the oven so it could continue cooking while I ate this piece because I was hungry. <sighs> Spice you. Ooh, yeah, this should have been a spice tolerance day. That is just straight up heat. Holy smokes, spicier than I thought it would be with that little amount that I put in there. Ooh, the brisket's so good. That is really spicy. Also, the dough is really salty, so I have a feeling that I put too much salt in it. I did, in fact, put too much salt into it. Instead of the 5 8 of a teaspoon I was supposed to put in, I put in a whole tablespoon. In my defense, I was splitting a recipe in half in my head, plus I got it mixed up with the olive oil number. Okay, that's a pretty weak excuse. Moral of the story, write everything out. This is where I made my next mistake. Well, besides the pizza resembling hockey pucks. Always let your food cool down. I took my second bite and... All right, no big deal, but I just burned my lip pretty bad. I let the pizza cool down and went to finishing the last pieces. So salty. So cool. Last piece. I don't think that was worth it, but... Yeah, I don't know what I was gonna say. Yeah, so it was a rough day, but I figured why not just make it a spice tolerance day? So to combat the heat, I'm going to try almond milk, which I had because I was going to try and make ice cream. This is actually my first time trying almond milk and I don't know how I feel about it. It is helping with the spice, I believe, but it also could be that my mouth is happy with the soothing effect it's having on my burnt mouth and my burnt lip, so. Could be either or, but the spice, I mean, has died down at this point. Um, it was really spicy, and I will be redoing this for tomorrow because I can't believe I let this get the better of me. I need to sleep this off and figure out a new game plan, but. We'll see. This video was only supposed to be a minute long, but here we are. And tomorrow is going to be a new day and we're gonna conquer the pizza. Also, I got my 10K steps in today. Today is day 1.5 of letting you pick my meal and I'm redoing day one, which was an epic fail. First thing I'm going to do is fix the amount of salt I put in the dough mixture and then I'm mixing the dry ingredients before adding the water and olive oil. I let that mix for about 10 minutes before placing it in a bowl and covering it up. Next thing I'm changing is heating up the cast iron skillet as I preheat my oven to 550 degrees Fahrenheit compared to the 500 I did yesterday. I'm hoping this will help develop a better crust. Good news is that I have much less prep today since I already cooked the chicken and cut the toppings yesterday. After an hour and a half, the dough has risen quite a bit. I took the hot skillet out and added about double the amount of olive oil that I used yesterday. I should have stretched out the dough ahead of time so it could relax, but luckily I was able to carefully stretch it out in the pan. I pre-cooked it for eight minutes to ensure the dough would be cooked fully. No hot sauce this time since I already had my fun with that yesterday. Mozzarella, smoked brisket, chicken, cherry peppers, red onion, and more barbecue sauce. Into the oven for 10 minutes and boom, so much better. Although yesterday was very frustrating, I'm glad I was able to work it out today. What should I try for day two?
Today is day two of letting you pick my meal and we have a suggestion from Creamy. First thing that came to mind were some Wagyu hot dogs that I've had in my freezer, so I went with corn dogs. I'll be using a recipe from Stella and Spice because she made it look really good in her video. First was chopping up a potato into small cubes and placing it in hot water. Then preparing the batter with warm water, sugar, and yeast. Let that sit for a bit and then added salt and flour. Mixed it and covered for an hour. I skewered the hot dogs. In Stella's video, she used pepper jack cheese, but I already had this Colby and Monterey Jack in the fridge, so I'll be using that. I dry the potatoes and added cornstarch and salt, and then poured out some panko next to it. Things were going suspiciously well up to this point, and I was getting wary. I guess I needed a bigger cup for the batter because it really grew. Now it was time to dip the hot dogs in the batter. I was trying to do the twisty motion so it would come out easier, but it was a no-go. Take two wasn't much better, but take three had some potential. I rolled it in the potato and then panko, and somehow I was able to salvage the second one. I gave up on the other one. Fried them until they were a golden brown, added sugar, ketchup, and mustard. And it was actually very tasty and had a good crunch. Today is day three of letting you pick my meal, and Jana asked for spam and rice with an egg adding sriracha. So my mind went straight to the stash of stuff I brought back from my recent trip. Hot and spicy spam, an upgraded furry kake that Yakitori guy got me from the Japanese store. I cooked some rice and pulled out the spam slicer that I've had for months and now using it for the first time. I've only tried the regular spam and the low sodium version, so I was excited to give this hot and spicy one a try. Will it turn into a spice tolerance challenge? I don't know, we'll see. Here's my cat chilling in his bed, but watch this. Yep. There he is. The spam slicer thing is really convenient because I always cut mine unevenly. I cooked each side for a couple of minutes in a nonstick pan, and in a separate pan, I cooked a fried egg. Then I scooped a bowl of rice, and I'm really excited to try this furry kake. Added the spam to the rice along with the fried egg, and then sprinkled the furry kake over the top. And the last component to the request, sriracha. This is gonna be good. The furry kake was nice and salty and sweet. Was the spam hot and spicy? Eh, not really, but it had a good mild spice flavor to it. This is what I would call comfort food. Today is day four of letting you pick my meal, and I have a suggestion from Gabrielle. Try custard toast, everyone's been doing it. Maybe add sriracha or something as a twist. Okay, so a spicy custard toast. Let's see what we can come up with. First, I got some brioche bread from a local bakery, and while I was there, I spotted strawberry jalapeno jam. I don't know if this would go well with custard, but there's only one way to find out. Then I remembered the extra hot sriracha chocolate I had last month, so I went back to the candy store to grab a bar of that. Should be a good topping, right? Also, I was browsing the store and came across Harry Potter chocolate frogs, and I couldn't resist. Back home, here is the beautiful chocolate bar. I'm going to smash it up so I can sprinkle bits on top of the custard. Next was slicing up the bread. Confession, this is the first time I'm slicing a whole loaf of bread like this. I've seen people do it in videos, and I've always been envious, but not anymore. I cut a couple of beautiful slices and went to making the custard. One egg, a few tablespoons of Greek yogurt, and one tablespoon of maple syrup. And then you just whisk it up until it looks like everything is mixed. I made little wells in the bread and then poured the custard in. So far, so good. And it was just the right amount for both slices. Now it's time to crack open the strawberry jalapeno jam. I mixed it up and then kind of just plopped them in. I mean, the most important thing is making sure this tasted good, but I wanted it to look pretty too. Then I kind of just moved the jam around with the chopstick so I could ensure that I'll get some with each bite. At the store, I was torn between strawberries and raspberries, but I feel like I eat strawberries all the time, so I went with the raspberries. Last but not least, I added the spicy chocolate. I put it in the air fryer for 7 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and while I waited, I wanted to see which collectible wizard card I got. Man, the train scene where Harry and Ron get all the candy gets me every time. I just have to have chocolate when I watch it. Hey, what's up, Helga? Whoa. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> After I had my fun and chocolate frog, it was time to try the spicy custard toast. I kind of wish the chocolate melted a little better, but it still looked really good. And since you asked for sriracha, here we go. Just kidding. There's already sriracha flavored chocolate, so I'm good. Okay, that's good. This is one of the best things I've ever put in my mouth. Holy smokes. So you got the tartness from the raspberries and the jam, you got the savoriness of the egg custard, and then you got the sweetness and a hint of spiciness from the chocolate. Then you got the crunchy texture of the toast. My gosh, this is amazing. It's not too spicy. So this was a thousand percent a success and I will definitely be making this again. What should I do for day five? Today is day five of letting you pick my meal, and random dude 427 is asking for my favorite grilled cheese sandwich. I'm picking this one because it's snowing out and I gotta work with what I have at home. I've got some bacon, got some cheese, and some Takis. About a year ago, I made a bacon ramen grilled cheese sandwich, and it wasn't my favorite, but I wanted to recreate it. This time, make it spicier. I blitzed the Takis and then started cooking the bacon on low heat in my carbon steel skillet. I have a few slices of the Colby and Monterey Jack cheese from the Korean corn dog video, but I'm not sure if that's 
that's enough cheese so I'm also grating this cheddar cheese that I have. This is a lot and I don't think I'll use it all. Cutting it into the brioche loaf that I got for yesterday's video, just a couple of slices. Next I'm going to butter the bread but first I'm going to make the butter spicy. I'll be adding the scorpion pepper tabasco which slipped right out of my hand. Holy smokes. Jaden, that could have been really bad. My cat was totally unfazed. I spread the spicy butter onto the slices, making sure every inch was covered, and then I pat them into the Takis dust. Main thing I'm worried about is the butter and Takis burning in the pan, so I'll need to make sure and keep the heat low. Got the bacon out of the pan and then cooked the noodles. I made the spicy kimchi version. Threw the buttered bread into my warped nonstick pan and just set the heat to medium low. So it's cold outside and what typically goes with a grilled cheese sandwich? I decided to make some tomato soup from scratch. Just kidding, I don't know how, but I had the soup in the cupboard so I'll heat it up and see how the sandwich will taste with it. Added the Colby and Monterey Jack cheese slices and check the bottom. Looked good to me. Bacon, noodles, more bacon, more cheese, and then I closed it up. Flipping is always the scary part, but we got this. Here we go. Okay, it's movable, that's good. I just let it sit for a little bit longer before taking it off the heat. Man, doesn't it look good? For the most part, the Takis was able to stay on the bread and it was able to develop a nice crust. Ready, the cross section. I feel like every time I make a grilled cheese sandwich, I say this is the best grilled cheese sandwich I've ever made, but this is the best grilled cheese sandwich I've ever made. You can definitely taste the hot sauce. Um, I think I put just the right amount that you get hints of it, and I can distinctively tell it's the hot sauce because it tastes similar to Carolina Reaper. Time to try it dipped in the tomato soup. And that was a bad idea. The combo didn't work at all, but at least I'll have a bowl of warm soup to eat normally. Next time, I would just cut down the Takis a bit because it made it a little salty, but other than that, I was very happy with the results. Now, what should I do for day six? Today is day six of letting you pick my meal, and we have a suggestion from Aliyah. How about make mozzarella sticks fried with Takis instead of breadcrumbs, and some mashed potatoes on the side. Well, I've got the Takis from yesterday, and I'm not sure if you guys remember, but I tried air fried ramen mozzarella sticks during my 30 day ramen challenge. I still have the jalapeno mozzarella sticks in the freezer. I also have a smoked and brined pork chop that will go great with the mashed potatoes. Plus, I have the oil from the Korean corn dogs, so it'll be nice to reuse it after straining. And since I have the hot oil, I'll cook the pork chop by frying as well. I chopped and boiled potatoes in salted water, drained them and added butter, garlic, and the almond milk from a few days ago. Just mashed it up and added some salt and pepper. Mozzarella stick went into the flour, egg, and then the Takis dust. Then I did the same for the two other sticks. I fried the pork chop first and then dropped in the mozzarella sticks. After about a minute, they started oozing cheese out, so I went ahead and took them out. It's exactly like what you think it would. Jalapeno mozzarella with Takis. Separately, everything was good, but combine all of them, not so much. Not bad though. Today is day seven of letting you pick my meal and I will be trying arguably the most requested dish so far on my channel and that is Puni Puri. Sorry if I butchered that. I'll also be heading back home to Wichita and I think this is the only Indian restaurant here that serves it. I could be wrong, but I didn't see this on the online menu for the other places. Deshi Curry Indian Cuisine. This one is made with tamarind chutney, chili, chopped masala, potato, onion, and chickpeas. I also got an order of the chicken biryani and their chef's mix of the tandoori specials. Holly and one of my my friends came along for the adventure and Holly tried her hand at putting together the first one. Then all of it? Yeah. Okay. Like it almost tastes like Ooh. Oh, yours looks good. I didn't think about hitting it that way. I added some of the chickpea mixture in and then topped it with the tamarind chutney. Popped it in my mouth and it was delicious. I was most surprised by the tamarind. The sweet and sour note to it just added to the overall experience of the mushy chickpea texture against the crunchy, crispy puff. That's super good. Yeah, I know. Wow. That's what I thought. <laughs> and I wouldn't say it was a sensory overload, but it was definitely a sensory party in my mouth. I wanted to yell, hoo. <laughs> I don't know why. The tandoori meats were lamb and chicken. I assembled my plate with a little bit of everything. The fries is cool. It's interesting. Added some of the sauce, which I think is yogurt based. I could be wrong, but just added a little over the top. And we also got an order of garlic naan, which I tried with the chickpeas and the lamb. Everything here was on point. There wasn't a single dish that I didn't like. My favorite part of the experience was definitely watching my friends' reactions to trying the food. They both said that they're going to go back since they enjoyed the food so much. This is so good. I'm definitely coming back here. Thanks to everyone who suggested this, which allowed me to discover this restaurant. What do you think I should do for day eight? 
Today is day eight of letting you pick my meal, and I got a request to try Moroccan food, Bastilla or Tajine. I'm glad this suggestion popped up because there's a restaurant here in Wichita that serves Moroccan cuisine. I got an order of the chicken Tajine, but the Bastilla needed 24 hour notice, so I'll have to try that another time. I also got the dolme, which are stuffed grape leaves, and Holly got some Turkish coffee. Then the chicken Tajine came out, and I did not expect it to be served in this clay pot, which I later found out is called a Tajine, hence the name, and it kept everything inside of it very hot. The chicken is slow braised in spices with the potatoes and olives, and oh my gosh, it was delicious. The chicken just slipped right off the bone and it had all this time to soak in the flavorful broth. So you eat it with some of the rice and it was dense in flavor, but sat light in my stomach. I could have easily eaten it all myself and I just know I have to go back. Make sure you take out the pits when you're eating the olives. I was with a group of friends and they all loved it as well. Thank you so much for the suggestion, which helped me find Marrakesh Cafe. And I only tried like one dish. I have so much more Moroccan food to try. Today is day nine of letting you pick my meal and I've got a request to try Momo's, which I've had once before, but it was with a bunch of other foods, so it kind of got lost in the sauce. Chicken Momo's, pork Momo's, and then down here, he's got the uh, veg Momo's ready to go. This is the perfect time to check out a Nepalese restaurant in Wichita called Himali Eats. I reached out to the restaurant ahead of time to see if we could film some of the process of the Momo's being cooked. And one of the owners, Tashi, said sure. While the Momo's were being steamed, they cooked up some of the other food that I ordered like street noodles that were cooked in a wok. Tashi said Momo's are traditionally eaten steamed, but they also offered a couple of other cooking methods like pan frying and deep fried Momo's. They are served with a tomato based sauce and I was most excited to try the chili Momo's since it said it's cooked in a spicy sauce. And we also got an order of butter chicken. They mentioned that they used to wrap the momos by hand, but then the demand called for a machine. Basically, it was my first time there, so I just wanted to try a lot of things. I googled how to eat momos since Tashi was busy with orders and I couldn't ask him, and I saw online that you eat it with your hands. So I grabbed one, dipped it in the sauce, and ate it. And I loved it. Dumpling exterior and curry filling, it hit the spot for me. And although they were small, they were dense and I got full pretty quickly. To be honest, I couldn't really tell the difference in the fillings for each one, but they had a similar curry taste to it. The chili momos were more of a tomato flavor than spicy, but still good. So I guess I've been eating it wrong. We're supposed to eat it all in one bite. Uh, in the sauce? Yep. And with our hands? Yep. Uh, yeah. and, uh, hands or utensils? Oh, oh. whoops. <laughs> We're trying to eat this traditionally. <laughs> we finished off with some dessert, pistachio kulfi and gulab jamun. Hopefully I pronounced that better this time. A sweet finish to a savory meal. I'll definitely be back. I enjoyed chatting with Tashi and the food was great. Today is day 10 of letting you pick my meal, and I've got a request from Tara Loves Chocolate on TikTok to try Jamaican food. There's a restaurant in Kansas City, Wagwan, that serves Nigerian and Jamaican food, so I went to go check it out. I got some non-alcoholic ginger beer to sip on while I waited on the food, and I ordered a couple of dishes because I couldn't just pick one. The jerk chicken with jollof rice, cabbage, and fried dumplings, and I also got an order of oxtails with rice and peas. Okay, the jerk chicken looked good, but the oxtails were like on another level. I went for the oxtails first and they were so tender, the fork was just shredding through them. And I can confidently say that this is the best oxtail I've ever had. Sweet, flavorful meat that just made my taste buds happy as heck. And eating it with the rice and peas, I just had to remind myself to chew because I was just gulping it all down. I mean, just look at how tender this meat is. So plan was just to eat a little bit of each and save the rest for my next meal, but I couldn't stop eating the oxtail. The fried dumplings were great too. They provided a nice sweet touch while also changing up the food texture a bit. The best bites were when I got some of the rice, cabbage, oxtail, and fried dumpling. Also, I kind of gave up on the fork for the oxtail. To get all the meat off, I just need to grab it with my hands. Anyway, I had to move on to the jerk chicken because I felt bad for it sitting all alone over here. The chicken looked great. The outside had a nice crisp to it, and when I went to grab the bone, it just came clean out. Man, there were so many flavors to this, and it's hard to pinpoint which one stood out. I just know that it was savory and delicious, and I'm in love. It was also served with a sauce, which I'm not quite sure sure what it was, but it tasted similar to a tangy barbecue sauce. Either way, it was delicious and I'm so happy I came to this place. I was close to eating it all, but luckily I was able to save some for my meal later on. What should I eat for day 11? Today is day 11 of letting you pick my meal, and I've got a request to eat vegan food, so I'm heading to my favorite vegan restaurant in Kansas City for a burger. Lucky for me, one of the owners, Saeed, was testing out next month's special, and he asked me if I wanted to give it a try, 
And of course, I was 100% down. He doesn't have a name for it yet, but the burger is made with two patties covered in a sauce made with cream seasonings. He's also been brining pineapples for a while and will add a slice to the burger along with some vegan cheese. And what better to go with the burger than some buffalo fries? The mound of fries were topped with lettuce and ranch, and I already knew this was going to be good. Then to finish out my order, I got their Oreo milkshake, which is made with oat ice cream. That's definitely a first for me. Man, this looks good. Almost too pretty to eat. But you know, you got to take one for the team, right? And yeah, it was no hardship. Everything was absolutely delicious. The fries had time to absorb the sauces. The burger was a big mouthful. The milkshake tasted like a freaking milkshake. I finished the burger and the milkshake while I was there and then took the rest of the fries home because it was a lot of food. Today is day 12 of letting you pick my meal and we've got waffles. The first thing that came to mind was the mochi pancake mix I brought back last month. Even though it's a pancake mix, I'm sure I'll be fine in the waffle maker, right? For one of the toppings, I'll be using these freeze dried cookies and cream ice cream sandwich. I got these while Janelle was in town, but we forgot to try them. I'll just crumble them up over the waffles. I combined the mix with milk, vegetable oil, and two eggs. Once it was well mixed, I sprayed my waffle maker and put some of the batter in. I wanted to keep them small so I didn't fill it up. While they were cooking, I opened the ice cream sandwich and it looks like it may have gotten smashed while it was in my backpack but that's fine less work for later the mochi waffles looked ready at this point and i got about three and a half from this batch the texture looks great and it tasted even better i thought i was going to be able to crush this in my hand <laughs> I don't know why I thought I was going to be able to do that. After spreading up bits of it across the waffles, I also added some strawberries and just a little bit of syrup because the waffles were already sweet. They were fluffy and slightly chewy and 100% delicious. I only regret not getting another package. Today is day 13 of letting you pick my meal and I'll be making salmon in a stainless steel pan. Yes, I'm finally going to retry it. I'm also going to make some roasted potatoes along with cleaning out some veggies that are about to go bad. Cabbage, tomato, mushroom, red onion, and bell pepper. And back to the chopped potatoes. I'm going to cook them in some boiling water for just a little bit before throwing them in the oven. Adding some salt to the water as well, and while that's cooking, I'm going to toss the vegetables together. This will serve as a side to the salmon and potatoes. I do feel more confident this time in cooking the salmon, mainly because Matt gave me some really useful tips while I was in Seattle, but also because I've been cooking a bunch of other stuff. I'm kind of getting a better feel for the kitchen, if that makes sense. The hard part is still timing everything. Like for this, I need to cook the potatoes, make the side dish, and time the salmon so that it all comes out at the same time. And I gotta make sure I get all the shots. There are times when I forget to hit record, and it hurts. Anyway, back to the food. To keep things simple, I'm just going to season the veggies with Old Bay seasoning. So the potatoes were about halfway cooked, so I drained them and prepared an olive oil mix to toss them in. I just added salt, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. Next is going back to the salmon, and it's closer to room temperature now, so it can cook more evenly. I've mentioned in the past that I don't like cutting vegetables and stuff because it's so tedious, but I've actually grown to like it since I've been getting to practice my knife skills. But one thing I don't think I'll ever enjoy doing is descaling fish. It just takes so long and the scales go everywhere. After I finish the tedious task, I pat them dry with a paper towel. I then drench both pieces in some oil, something I learned from Matt, and seasoned each side with salt and pepper. Back to the potatoes, I tossed them into the olive oil mixture until it was all well coated. Then I dropped it onto a baking sheet that had a wire rack and made sure to spread them out so each one could get a nice crust. Into the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I figure these will be ready when the salmon finishes cooking. Got my stainless steel pan on just above medium high heat and added some oil. Then it was time to have some fun. I placed the salmon in, skin side down first, and up until that point, I had planned everything out pretty well, but then of course we get to this point and I realized I didn't have the fish spatula that Matt gifted me and I had to rummage through my drawers to find it. Luckily, I found it and I used it to press down on the fish. Another thing I learned from Matt is that as you press down on the fish, you can feel the air bubbles and once that subsides, then you know it's ready to flip. Once that quieted down, I went ahead and flipped the salmon, which didn't stick, guys. I was pretty happy. Although there were a couple spots here that I could have pressed down so it could have developed a better crust. I mean, compared to my last few attempts, these looked great. So I definitely didn't time the potatoes correctly. The salmon, the salmon is pretty much done. This is nice and warm, but the potatoes definitely not where I want it to be. So timing is off. I upped the oven temp to 500 degrees to help it cook faster and then I took the salmon out to rest and look how clean the pan is. Cleanup should be easy. I let the potatoes cook for another eight-ish minutes but I didn't want my salmon to get cold and they didn't look that bad so I took them out. Next time I know to keep them in longer for a better golden brown. Last was plating everything. 
or attempting to. My plating skills could seriously use some help. I ended up just zooming in so it looks better. No one will ever know, right? The salmon was nice and juicy, didn't overcook it, which was nice. The veggies were simple, but had good flavor, and the potatoes didn't have the crust I wanted, but the flavor and doneness were there. So hopefully I redeemed myself for my previous salmon disasters. What do you guys think? Today is day 14 of letting you pick my meal and I'll be eating some Filipino food. This is perfect because a new place opened up that I've been wanting to try. The eatery is named Ting's Filipino Bistro. I ordered a bunch of stuff and they gave me utensils for three people, which was pretty funny because it was just me. I got their Lachon Kuali, which is served with chili vinegar. Next was their Lumpia with their spicy sweet sauce. Then I had their vegetable pancit. And last but not least, I ordered the chicken adobo. First, I started with the Lumpia. I like how small they were. Basically could be one biters. And these were tasty, not as good as Janelle's, but they were were nice and crispy and packed with flavor. Next was the lechon koali. One thing I was worried about was whether the inside was going to be dry. Dipped it in the chili vinegar and it was far from dry. Look at how juicy this is. The pancit hit the spot and I didn't realize there was a lemon wedge I was supposed to squeeze over the noodles and I saved the most savory dish for last, the chicken adobo with garlic fried rice. The chicken was juicy and the adobo sauce was slightly sweet and salty. I was barely chewing the garlic fried rice because it was going straight down when mixed in the sauce. This was a solid meal. I'm definitely going back. Today is day 15 of letting you pick my meal, and I've got a request to make a savory version of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. To me, peanut butter is already savory, but I'm not sure if it's typically classified as that. Let me know what you think. But to make it even more savory, I thought of the bacon I had in the freezer, and I saw in one of Janelle's recent videos, she added banana to her sandwich. I'm also going to add some maple syrup to the bacon to give it a sweeter note. I think I should have drained the grease before adding it, just because the syrup was just swimming in the grease. Toasted my bread and added peanut butter butter to one slice. To the other slice, I'm going to add this beautiful strawberry jalapeno jam. I've been debating on going back to get the habanero version, but I don't really use jam that often. I sliced a banana and added that to the peanut butter side, then I added the bacon in a couple of layers. I was wondering if I should just add a couple of pieces, but ended up just putting it all in. And I don't know about you guys, but this looks pretty dang good. Surprisingly not bad. It is overwhelmingly sweet with banana. There's almost no saltiness from the bacon, which I was hoping would help balance this a bit more, but it's just sweetness on sweetness on sweetness. I also wish I had cooked the bacon so it's more crispy, but like it actually, I mean, it still works together. It's not bad. The more I eat this, the more I like it. Also the spice is starting to come out from the jam. I didn't taste that at first, but now I am. So all the flavors are just slowly developing in my mouth, I guess. Today is day 15 and a half of letting you pick my meal, and I'm redoing yesterday's challenge with a few small changes. First, I'm going to air fry the bacon to see if it will become crispier, and I won't add any syrup to it since that made it too sweet. Two, I'm going to toast the bread just a tad bit longer so there's more of a crunch. Just kidding, I accidentally forgot about the bread while gathering all my other ingredients, so it's a little over toasted. Last change is that I'm going to slice the banana into thinner slices so there's less of its sweeter presence. My goal is for the saltiness of the bacon to come through to make the sandwich more savory. I pulled the bacon out of the air fryer and I'm not sure what went down inside this thing, but this isn't what I expected. Good news is that they're still crispy, so I just chopped them up into smaller bits. Then I combined everything, and I don't know why I felt the need to squeeze it, but it was fun. It's much better, and now I have the saltiness from the bacon, and it's not overwhelmingly sweet like yesterday, so I like this much better. Alrighty, what should I do for day 16? Today is day 16 of letting you pick my meal, and I've got a request to try a full English breakfast. So I messaged the only person that I assumed knew where to get black pudding in Kansas City, my Irish friend Sean. He told me I could get the black pudding at a local marketplace. Then I asked his advice on how to cook it so I don't get roasted in the comment section, and he said, you know what, why not come by our new place and I'll cook it for you? And there's no way I'm turning that down. So this video really turned into me trying a full Irish breakfast. He took me to Brown's Irish Market in Kansas City, where we got all the goods. Side note, Brown's is the oldest Irish business outside of Ireland, and they're celebrating their 135th anniversary this year. So we took back all the food and had to wait for a little bit for the meat to thaw, but then Sean got to cooking everything. And it has to be bachelor's baked beans. Irish butter. Is this better than Kerrygold? Uh, no, it's not as good as Kerrygold. He started by heating up the beans first and then prepping all the other ingredients like tomato and sausages. Brown's Irish sausage. Then he sliced the white pudding which has no blood in it. And see this is already fully cooked. 
and the black pudding, which does have blood in it. He pulled out the bacon, or rashers as they call it. It's a leaner cut since it's not the pork belly portion. He threw in the sausages first and also prepared a pot of tea. Then he threw in the white and black pudding so it could get a nice cook and sear. My stomach was growling at this point. Sean said this is something he'd eat once or twice a week back home. I was definitely most curious to see how the black pudding would taste. He cooked the rashers next, and they're not like American bacon where it's cooked to crisp with all the fat. And last but not least, we're frying up the eggs. Everything was simply cooked, and I couldn't wait for it to be plated. Two sausages, two pieces of each the white and black pudding, tomato slice, rashers, baked beans, fried egg, and bread. This was a hearty meal and I declined sugar in my tea but I guess you have to add the milk. People always drink super strong tea but then just soak it in milk. And I thoroughly enjoyed this meal. I was surprised by the texture of the pudding. I mean it's kind of in the name but I wasn't expecting the soft bite to it and the sausages also had a similar texture. Really easy bites and the black pudding had a slight metallic taste to it but it wasn't as pronounced as I thought it would be. I finished this meal and went home and took a nap. I gotta be honest, I woke up really thirsty and I'm pretty sure it's from the sodium content of this meal, but it was worth it. I wanna give a big shout out to Sean for cooking this up for me. He's about to open his new restaurant, so he's been busy prepping the new place every day. Also, I know this wasn't a full English breakfast as requested, but from you English viewers out there, can you let me know what the difference is? Maybe I can try making it at home. Today is day 17 of letting you pick my meal, and I've got a request to eat pho with chicken. Luckily, my sister-in-law's mom made this, so it was a quick meal. She cooked the broth with two whole chickens, which she removed and then chopped up, used some of the meat for an appetizer to dip in a pepper lime mix, and then some of the meat for the pho. The noodles don't take long to cook at all, just a little dip in hot water. Then the bowls are assembled with some chicken and a mixture of onion, cilantro, and green onion. A little sprinkle of salt and pepper, and then the broth is poured over the top. And you've got yourself a beautiful bowl of chicken pho. Taste the broth and add hoisin sauce and sriracha to your liking. I also like to add bean sprouts, Thai basil, and lime juice to mine. Mix and enjoy. You also can't forget the meatballs. If you've never had pho before, you're missing out, and I highly recommend you visit a Vietnamese restaurant for some. Today is day 18 of letting you pick my meal, and I've got a request to eat shawarma, so I'm heading to a place recommended by Sean, who cooked me the full Irish breakfast. The restaurant is named Baba's Pantry, and they serve Palestinian food. They offered me some tea after I put it in my order. It was lightly roasted, and it was good to cleanse the palate before my meal. They also had a bunch of products they made that you could buy. I'll have to go back and pick some up. So I ordered their coffee, pita, baba ganoush, beef kebab, stuffed falafels and their chicken shawarma. Everything looked and smelled great. I think they noticed that I was wanting to try a bunch of different things, so they brought me out some baklava to try, which is very nice of them. I started with the stuffed falafel first and dipped it in their tahini, and although it was stuffed with onions, it wasn't like a strong onion flavor. I love the crispy exterior combined with the mushy interior. Then I tried the baba ganoush, which is roasted eggplant pounded with fresh mint and lemon. I tore some pita and dipped it in. To me, eggplant doesn't have much of a flavor, so it's really easy for it to pick up all the flavors of the herbs and spices in this. And there were also pickles and pickled turnips, which I fell in love with. The tabbouli was nice and refreshing, and then it was time to move on to the chicken shawarma. Sometimes with thinly shaved chicken, it becomes dry, but this wasn't at all. Each piece had its own texture, and combined with the creamy sauce and pickles, it was a winner. And I wanted to explore the flavors of the baba ganoush with the shawarma, so I added some to the top. Then I moved on to the beef kebabs, which were served on a bed of hummus. I tried each separately and then together in the pita. Each dish I had was delicious. And and I didn't feel like it was a heavy meal even though it filled me up. Ended on the baklava and finished my coffee. I'm really loving this challenge so far because I've tried so many new places and each one has been amazing and I hope you all enjoy exploring the different cuisines as well. I grabbed a jar of the pickled turnips to go and then took my leftovers to Sean and Graham since they were near. If you're in Kansas City, please check this place out. Today is day 19 of letting you pick my meal, and I'm making the sloppy Jessica from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I totally forgot about this until I saw this comment, and then I got excited. It's mac and cheese, chili, pizza on a bun. I'm making a lazy version because I'm lazy, but also it's cold outside, and I don't know about you guys, but that makes me extra lazy. I went to the store, picked up mac and cheese, and I was just going to get frozen pizza, but to keep on theme with the laziness, I got the last slice of hot pizza. I checked the soup canisters to see if they had chili, but no luck there got a loaf of french baguette and also came across this spicy sriracha jack cheese that i thought would be good over the top they had a few options for canned chili but i went with amy's since that seemed fitting got home and then the first step was heating up the chili then i added the mac and cheese i mixed them up and i mean it didn't look all that bad <laughs> 
I don't know why that was so funny. Then I grated the cheese and sliced the baguette. Next was figuring out what to do with the pizza. In the show, I bet they just mixed up pizza topping and not actually used a pizza slice, but I thought it would be good as a base to help the integrity of the bread as well. And yes, I know how bizarre this looks, but just oh. bear with me. I mean, we're all in it together at this point. I pressed it all down so that there was room for the chili mac and cheese. I also knew I needed a way to keep this thing upright so the filling wouldn't pour out. And once I felt confident that it wasn't going to tip over, I added all of the chili mac and cheese in. This was a fun process. Everything was coming together quite well. Last thing to do before popping it into the oven was sprinkling the cheese over the top. It was a thing of beauty. I also weighed it, so give me your best guesses on how much you think this thing weighed. I popped it into the oven for about eight-ish minutes until the cheese melted and it was good to go. Dang, Gina, this thing looks amazing. Transferring it to the cutting board was a bit scary, but we survived. It was hefty and the cross section looked great. Just gonna have to get dirty. <laughs> that cross section. <laughs> oh boy. It's a little impractical to eat since the chili mac and cheese squeezes out, but man, it was so good. This is everything I've wanted to eat for the last 48 hours. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna lie, this is really good. <laughs> And some of you may be wondering if I ate the whole thing. And the answer is, of course. No, I'm just kidding. I wrapped up half for my friend. And now that I think about it, I haven't heard from him. So I should probably make sure he's okay. For day 20, you should go to a restaurant you've never been to and have the waiter slash waitress pick your meal for you. So for this day, I went to La Bodega with a friend where they served Spanish tapas. Do you mind picking our meal for us? Not at all. Day? For drinks, our waiter chose sangria for us. And then the first dish was papa fritas, which were refried roasted potatoes with garlic, parsley, and garlic cumin aioli. Next, we had charred sweet corn with garlic cumin aioli, manchego cheese, and smoked paprika. Plate number three was all bondigas, which were meatballs in a spicy garlic cream sauce and garlic crostinis. I was basically set if we were attacked by vampires. Plate number four were monaditos, which were made with pulled pork, roasted red peppers, and Montego cheese on toasted baguette. Plate number five was queso de cabra, which was made with fresno red sauce, goat cheese, and crostinis. And plate number six was skewered chicken and chorizo. And for dessert, he picked out churros for us, and it was really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed this experience, and I may turn this into a series. Let me know if you guys would be interested. Today is day 21 of letting you pick my meal, and I'm going to eat some Ethiopian food at Blue Nile Cafe. We ordered veggie sambusa for an appetizer, which are pastries filled with spicy lentils, cabbage, and carrot flavored with herbs and spices. Not sure what the sauce was, but it was mildly spicy and very delicious. And then we ordered a sampler platter that had ingadai wat, yakik wat, which are seasoned yellow split peas, atikelt, cabbage cooked with potatoes and carrots, gomen, which are collard greens, shimbura wat, chickpeas and green peas simmered in a gravy, masir wat, a stew made with with red lentils, fasolia, green beans and carrots cooked with onions, garlic, turmeric, ginger, and cardamom, danich wat, chunks of potatoes cooked with garlic and seasoned in tomatoes and berberry sauce, tibs wat, which is simmered beef, yebeg wat alicha, which is lamb cooked in stew, and doro wat, chicken marinated in lemon and sauteed in herbed butter. Everything was eaten with injera, which to me is spongy like bread that is slightly sour. I loved everything that I had here. I'd have to say my favorite was the yakik wat. It was buttery dense goodness. Today is day 22 of letting you pick my meal, and I'm getting a request to recreate one of my dishes from the ramen challenge. So I'm going to do one that I've been dreaming about, the ramen tamagoyaki that I failed. I mean, it wasn't a hardcore fail, but it can be better. I'm going to make a couple of changes. One, I'm going to use four eggs instead of three since I ran out of the egg mixture last time. And two, I'm going to lay out the noodles ahead of time since that took up precious time during the cooking process. I got my pan, oil, and eggs. Time to give this another try. Oil in the hot pan and then checking if it's hot enough using Chef Shoda's tip. I poured in a couple of ladles and then lowered the heat since it was cooking fast. I did a little peeling and then added the noodles. Once I got to the bottom, I wasn't quite sure what to do without this thing tearing. Also, there was no need to push everything to the top. I could have just left it there. More oil and egg, and I tried to use the hand motion and flip at the same time, but that's just going to need more practice. Sometimes I feel like I have more control with my hands, so that's why you'll see me trying to use it instead of a spatula, but of course I always go back to it. down to the last layer and I'm adding some black beans from the noodle package. I'm not even going to try to add the last batch of noodles. I used to be an all or nothing type of person in the kitchen, but I've learned I don't have to use all the food I prepped. Whoa. 
Okay, I was actually surprised that flip worked. I'm excited because I'm going to try to practice that flip motion some more and I think it will help a bunch. And it's not too bad looking, right? I added some furikake like last time and then cut into it. So this one doesn't have as many egg layers and it could be tighter, but I'm happy with how it turned out. Good news also is that it still tasted delicious. For day 23 of letting you pick my meal, I've got a request to try what's supposedly a fire combo. Take normal nacho Doritos and add some Frank's hot sauce. Since they didn't have any measurements, I just guesstimated it all. Next was to add some sriracha and tahin. And last but not least, a little bit of lemon juice. Then I shook it all up and my cat thought I was shaking the treat bag, so he was intrigued. <laughs> what? You want some? So they look good, and I knew I needed to eat it before it got soggy. So this is really good because it has everything you want. You've got the crunch, you've got the sour from the lemon, got a little bit of the spice from the hot sauces, and the saltiness from the tahini. Thanks for the suggestion. Today is day 24 of letting you pick my meal, and I've got a request from Sadness to eat Brazilian food, so I'm heading to Taste of Brazil. All right, and all that's gonna be for here, Chico? Uh, for here. Okay, so I have a number one, right? Number nine, a brigadeiro, and one caipirinha, right? Yes. So the first thing I got was their caipirinha, which reminded me of the ones that my neighbor made for me. Then I got their prato feito platter with the grilled picanha, a coxinha, and a brigadeiro. This was a lot of food, but I was more than ready to dig in. The rice, beans, and picanha platter came with pico de gallo, chimichurri, and farofa. The coxinha was freaking ginormous, and the brigadeiro looked great. I'm going to save that for last since it's dessert. JK, I couldn't resist and ate it first, and I'm glad I did. This was a dense ball of goodness. I don't think it's caramel, but that's what it reminded me of. This would have been absolutely perfect with a cup of coffee. Next, I tried the rice platter. The picanha was seasoned perfectly, just the right amount of salt. I had it with the beans and then dipped in farofa. I actually have a bag of this at home and I've been meaning to use it, but haven't had the chance yet. If you have any Brazilian recipes to use it with, please let me know. It's got a smoky and salty smell and flavor to it. One of the employees asked how everything was and I asked them how they typically use the sides. This is like a farofa. It's like a cassava flour, corn flour, depends sometimes. I like that on top of the beans. People do the chimichurri on top of the steak and the, that one, the pico, on top of the rice. This was a really filling meal and what I loved most about it was how each bite was different. One bite you get more rice and beans, the next more steak, and it was just crafted so that you can create your ultimate bites. I ended up dumping the rest of the farofa over everything and I almost forgot about my drink because everything was so delicious. Then it was time for the coxinha. I've had these before but never this big. I don't know how to eat this. I take a bite off the top or the side. So taking a bite off the top probably wasn't the best idea since that's where all the creamy filling was. If you ever see me shake food in a video, it's because it's really good and I don't have any words to say at that moment. This was just savoriness packed in a perfectly fried dough ball. It was filled with shredded chicken and partway through eating it, I realized it was served with chimichurri so I should probably add some of that. And it was good with it, but honestly I preferred it without the sauce. The coxinha was definitely a meal in itself. I've been wanting to try this place and I'm glad this challenge gave me the opportunity to go check it out. Thanks for the suggestion and let me know what you'd like me to try for day 25. So day 25 was perfect because my friend and I were chocolate hunting when I saw this comment and we walked right by a place that served chili cheese dogs. The place was called Taste of Philly. It was a hot dog served on a sesame bun with chili and then cheese sauce. Nothing fancy, nothing too crazy, but it's nostalgic to me because my mom used to get the foot long chili cheese coney dog from Sonic that I would split with my younger brother along with some tater tots. We'd get this a few times a month and it was always my job to cut the coney dog and the little paper trays they had them in. Maybe this is why I have a stronger stomach now as an adult. I practiced eating all this stuff when I was younger to develop the iron gut. Alrighty, just five more days of this challenge along with a 10k step challenge. For day 26, I'm going to pick a suggestion from Twitter so I'll have less to choose from. We'll see what I get. Today is day 26 of letting you pick my meal, and I'm picking a request that I've seen almost every single day. Try M&M Bakery in Delhi. You must try the hook em up sandwich and also something for dessert. I recommend one of their fried cinnamon rolls or cookies. That's a pretty tough decision between those two desserts, but I went with the cookie because the employee suggested the chocolate chip with these nuts. That's the name, by the way. I got the goodies, seat belted them in, and took them home. And I was joking. I also got the fried cinnamon roll. First, I was blown away by the size of the sandwich. So it's got pepper beef, turkey ham, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions, Miracle Whip, mustard, pepper jack cheese, and American cheese all on an onion roll. That was amazing. And it was the perfect bite. 
They got the right amount of everything on the sandwich, so it's all balanced. There could easily be an overpowering ingredient, but nope, the sandwich was spot on. I was getting full, so I set the other half to the side and went for dessert. The chocolate chip cookie had walnuts in it, and it satisfied my sweet tooth. I bet it would have been even better if I warmed it up in the microwave for a little bit. The fried cinnamon roll was the size of my hand, and it was fluffy. Whoa! It was like eating a giant cinnamon flavored donut with icing on top. I couldn't tell the difference from it being fried and baked to be honest, but it was still delicious. Thanks for the suggestion. I'm loving all these gems I'm finding in Kansas City. I need to go back to my sandwich, but this is so good. Today is day 27 of letting you pick my meal, and I'm eating at the worst Italian restaurant in my city. Okay, hear me out. My friend texted me this restaurant's most recent post on Instagram, and they shared a review where someone named Kim said they were the worst Italian place in the city, so he said we should go check it out. For our starters, we got elephant fries, arancini, and burrata. The fries were light and airy, yet you get big bites of pure flavor. The arancini were risotto balls with mozzarella, roasted pepper sauce, and spinach. These were dangerous because they were filling, and we needed to save room for the entrees. The burrata was served with olive oil, roasted tomatoes, basil, pesto, and crostini. This was delicious and fun to eat, but I kept coming back to the fries. Then for our entrees, we ordered spaghetti cacio e pepe and grilled ahi tuna with straza preti. I mean, everything was really good. I don't eat Italian food that often, so I don't have much experience with it, but when something is good, you just know. Is it the worst Italian restaurant in my city? No, so I'm not sure what Kim is talking about. Day 28, eat at a Mexican restaurant. Okay, let's head to Taco Naco in Kansas City. I've tried some of their tacos last year and it looks like they've got some new stuff. First up, our Bidia tacos. So we save the fat of the brisket and uh, we just dip it there, all the tortillas. So that is what gives the red color to the quesadillas. And I mean, some people like to see the, the grease there, some people don't like, but we are Mexican, so we are gonna do it in our way, you know? One of the owners, Fernanda, is one of the coolest people I've ever met. You know when you meet someone and you think, you know what, I want to be that person's friend. They're cool as heck. She's that person. In Mexico, they use a chihuahua or queso menonita. They use jolly tortillas that are dipped in the fat juices and broth that are left from cooking the shredded beef. Add cheese, the beef, and fold. This recipe is very famous in Guadalajara, Jalisco. Cook until crispy and then add cilantro and onion. It's also served with consomme to dip them in. She mentioned here that this is why you always see chiclets at taquerias because your breath will smell and then you can't kiss anyone. And that is the juice that we use for there. Yeah. And then this is a penca de maguey. It so, is a what? Uh, penca de maguey is the leaves of the fruit that they use for make tequila. Taking a nice bath with all the... And then once it's done, it's easy to shred. Yes. Next up, she prepared some queso birrias, some bigger tortillas, cheese, and then carne asada. And then this is Brian's favorite, that is the cochinita pibil, pork al pastor. Was my mouth watering during this? Yes. Did Fernanda notice and feed me in the kitchen? Also yes. How is hot? <laughs> Do you get it or I yeah, need to I got it? Yeah, I got it. You did great. That is the beauty when you open like everything is like... They also got some pork and chicken tamales topped with sour cream and cilantro. Juicy, savory, goodness. And then she made a taco platter because why not? I gotta admit, I miss this behind the scenes stuff. I miss listening to chef's stories and explanations behind their cooking techniques. It's something I'm going to make a priority to get back into this year. It should give me good inspiration for cooking at home as well. So this was a lot of food and we were going to need to wash it down with some drinks. So she made their michelada, which had floating snacks on it and also had their margaritas to sample. Don't tell my boss I'm drinking. She's mean. They oh. put all the time botanas on the top. So all the time in Mexico you drink, you eat. This one, we just put it on the top. I don't know what it is about tacos, but I've had some serious conversations with people while eating them, and this was one of those moments. I didn't film as much since we were talking about the purpose of life. All I can say is I left with a very happy belly, and I'm glad I came here for lunch. Oh, and I also grabbed some black garlic from their market because I've been wanting to try another compound butter, but this time make it spicier. Today is day 29 of letting you pick my meal, and I'm going to try Indonesian food. A spicy one, turkey leg in Indonesian cuisine. Definitely the first time I've seen turkey leg on a restaurant sign. We ordered croquette gandang, which are potato croquettes, martabak telur, egg wraps, nasi goreng babat, 
beef tripe fried rice and rendang spicy beef curry. The croquettes were delicious, crispy and crunchy yet creamy inside with meat and vegetables. Then I grabbed some of the beef tripe fried rice and the rice that came along with the rendang beef curry. You could tell the beef was slow cooked, it just fell apart with a little pressure from my fork. I'm a big fan of tripe since I eat it in pho all the time. Adding it in fried rice? absolutely delicious and I love the slivers of chili peppers in it as well. Then I had the egg wraps which are served with these chilies and they were hot. The wraps itself was mild flavored but I really appreciated the extra kick from the chilies. They also had a tropical fruit string that reminded me of Vietnamese jia. And of course we couldn't leave without trying a turkey leg. If this is my introduction to Indonesian food then this is off to a great start. Today is day 30 of letting you pick my meal and it is the last day of this challenge and I've got a request to try ramen bowls on Massachusetts Street in Lawrence, Kansas. All right, let's do it. It's about a 40 minute drive from my place. And as I got into the city, I realized I picked a good day. KU had a basketball game, so a bunch of people were out and about. I have a friend that actually recommends this place as well because they make their own noodles. So I was going to order their Hokkaido Tonkatsu Misu, but then something caught my eye. Ghost and extremely spicy. Hard to turn that down. It was a beautiful day to sit outside and finally get some quality time playing Pokemon. I started with an order of pan seared gyoza and came with a vinegar and chili oil dipping sauce. I'm not quite sure why my hand was shaking so much. Then the ramen bowl came out and it was a beauty. I tried the broth first and it had good flavor. Now the heat comes from this ghost pepper sauce. The employee who brought out the food told me to use it sparingly because a little goes a long way. I mixed the sauce into the broth and I was definitely getting whiffs of ghost pepper. It's got a very distinctive smell. Now the broth is red and it's time for a taste. Holy shiznuts, that's hot. All right, that's pure ghost pepper spice. Look at how gorgeous these noodles are. A little part of me was sad because I haven't been able to successfully make ramen noodles at home yet, but this gave me motivation. All right, when he said a little goes a long way, he definitely was not joking, but it's good, got good heat. It was just bite after bite of goodness. Noodles were the perfect chewiness, broth was spicy and flavorful, and all the toppings added to the experience. I also threw in the gyoza so it could soak up the spicy broth. almost out the noodles. My tongue and my mouth is going numb from the spiciness of this, but the heat is like a really good heat. It's really delicious. This bowl of ramen was definitely worth the drive and it was a great ending to this fun series. I'm sorry if I wasn't able to get to your suggestions, but there were just so many and only one of me. But I've got some great suggestions saved, so I'll always be on the hunt during my travels. These are my thoughts on the 30 days of letting you pick my meal challenge. I really enjoyed it. The end. I'm just kidding. It kind of turned from me trying to cook things at home to me exploring other foods at restaurants, but I'm not complaining. I was introduced to many new places and ate a variety of foods. Another side benefit was getting to learn the pronunciation of dishes, or at least try to say them. I also rediscovered my passion for connecting with the people behind the scenes. As I edit these videos, I noticed that my questions have shifted to asking them more about their cooking techniques. I wasn't thinking about those things before, but now I am. Hopefully everything I learn can transfer to my kitchen. And as I mentioned before, I got so many suggestions on foods to try, so I'll have content ideas for a while.